How's it going, Gray Boys? Still not fully sold on that nickname, but we're gonna go with it for now. Welcome to the preseason. This is going to be an interesting year as the offensive coordinator. Only playing the offense, but again, I think we'll be playing double headers, except for in this episode since we have the preseason to go through. Uh, I like to do recruiting last, so let's go through and redshirt our players and start hitting our depth chart and all that jazz. Uh, I have a couple of ideas of what's going to happen already, but they're not all that crazy. First off, Albert Johnson, our backup quarterback, we are going to redshirt. Uh, both of these guys are going to be terrible if they have to come in at any point in the season, so we might as well sit the better guy so that by the time he's a redshirt senior quarterback, maybe he's a serviceable backup. Uh, running back wise, I would like to sit Stan Williams, and I think I'm going to. He's a junior. The two guys behind him, similar on overall, similar on speed. They're redshirt sophomores. Next year, all three of these guys will be redshirt juniors. So it could cause a bit of problems in the future, but we will cross that bridge when we get to it. Nothing to do at fullback. At wide receiver, I would be tempted in a lot of cases to sit Serge Mitchell. Uh, top player on this team, 91 overall with the 94 speed and the 94 acceleration. He would be great for us next year, but I just can't sit the best player on my team. I have to have him, especially because he's on offense. I think if he was on defense, uh, we would probably redshirt him if we could. But because he's on offense, we need him to be around. I am going to sit Brian Palmer. Uh, and I think we'll probably also do Michael McCallo. I can't say that name. Uh, so <laughs> uh, we're just going to call him Mikey. Moving on, tight ends, kind of a similar situation. We'll sit the sophomore, uh, left tackle, left guard are fine. At center, we are going to sit Sean King. He's 54 overall. I would rather play a tired, higher overall player than a fresh 54 overall player. Right guard, similar situation. We'll sit the freshman right guard, Courtney Keith. Right tackle will stay. Left end will sit the freshman. Right end will sit the freshman. Defensive tackle, we're going to sit the freshman and probably the junior as well. Uh, I think we should have enough depth there. At the left outside linebacker, again, sit the freshman. Middle linebacker, we are going to sit the better of the two freshmen in Joseph Pruitt. And then right side... Uh, yeah, we'll sit Matt Graham, the junior, so that, that way we have, again, a little bit more talent for next year. I expect Wade Benjamin to have a career season. He essentially led the nation in tackles last year, uh, so we'll hope that he can follow up on that. Similar situation as our wide receiver, uh, as we have here at corner. I just can't get away with sitting our best corner, even though we could. <laughs> we have so many uh, red-shirted upperclassmen. It would just turn into, what is that, five redshirt seniors next year. So we're going to allow him to play. Hopefully the depth at corner will be useful. And he's also a captain. We can't we can't sit him his senior season. Free safety, nobody can be sat. Strong safety, not going to sit the best player senior. Uh, and that's all of our positions. Depth chart, I don't think we have anything that we're going to change. So, yeah, we'll just keep that the way it is. And now we can go straight to custom to schedules. Uh, I think there's like just one ch uh, change that we're going to make. I don't like having a buy in the first week. Goes against what I like. If I, it's just like, why would you not play as soon as possible? Uh, so we're going to sit this Troy game out. We'll take a buy there because we already have Kansas uh, actually visiting us and then NC State on the road. So that's two Power 5 opponents. Uh, so I'd like to go a G5 opponent for this Week 1 game. It's a shame the Mountain West update isn't out yet because Colorado State and Hawaii, I think, are both going to have some really cool uh, uniforms that we could take a look at. But instead, uh, well, we could go Old Dominion. That would be uh, not a crazy difficult game. SMU maybe? Yeah, let's play SMU. Uh, and we will play them on the road as well. Work on that strength of schedule a little bit. We should probably visit Kansas. Uh, but no, nah, we're going to make Kansas visit us. So that is what our schedule looks like. A bye in week four and another one in week 10. Uh, we get to end the season feeling pretty solid. I like our chances in our conference. 
We didn't do so hot last year as a team, but this season, well, we have one of the best uh, coaches as our offensive coordinator. That's that's us, by the way. We'll save that. Let's do some recruiting. See what we have. It's going to be really uh, interesting because as Coastal, I think we would have just gone in and swept on the recruiting this year. Back-to-back -back national championships and whatnot, but I don't think we're going to have a whole lot of talent that really likes us. None of the top 100 are interested, uh, which is <laughs> honestly a really big shame. I might try to snag a couple of these guys. We'll see. Um, but I think that what we're going to do is just see if anybody likes us at all that has any sort of skill. So just looking at the five and the three stars. Well, there's a bunch of three stars that want to play for us, which is good news. They don't seem like they're the best. They also don't seem like the worst. Do we have any sort of interest from any? No, nobody above a three star wants to play for us. This is going to be a tough year recruiting. Well, we'll just go ahead and add all these guys that have us first on their board. And heck, we'll even add the guys that have a second on their board for now. Uh, scouting might change some of that up, but that's, uh, that's a pretty easy way for us to figure some stuff out. Uh, actually, I'm going to have to go through and change some of this. Uh, and then, of course, we got to look at 40 times and bench and squat and see if we can pick somebody up that's crazy. Jared Brown, Juco Jr. Athlete with the 43240 is pretty nice. Um, yeah, we'll throw him in there. Uh, and then, you know, uh, obviously I'm going to add the guy with the 480 bench, another Juco Jr. tackle, and the 690 squat. Well, we're not going to get him, but maybe there's a chance at Matt Branch. Uh, well, our pitch info is not very good, and some very impressive teams from the South like him, so I don't know if that's going to happen. Uh, I'm just going to go through and fill up the board. We got 20 more spots, and then I'll pop back in with you guys when we're ready to start scouting. We've added uh, all 35 players, and I'm not sure how good of a class we're going to get. Uh, went to a lot of Juco guys, and of course I added the number one player on the board just because I'm curious to see. He starts at an 80. The uh, athlete, Nick Winston, goes up to an 82. So whatever team gets Nick Winston is going to be looking pretty good. I can almost guarantee you uh, that it's not going to be us. We get almost no bonus points i just had to see how good of a guy he was uh he can carry the ball well he's pretty quick he can play defense decently well he can catch all sorts going on with him well how about we look at players that we maybe have a chance at actually picking up i'm not sure on a lot of them but we're gonna try anyways jabari wood goes up to a 79 96 speed 96 acceleration 90 zone oh my gosh is this we don't have a chance at getting him, right? Number two corner. Why don't I add him? 210 bonus points for us. Maybe that's why. Uh, there's a small chance for us to pick him up. It's probably not going to happen, but that would be pretty cool. How about Jared Brown? The athlete goes up to a 77. He's pretty quick as well. Uh, he'd make a good running back or potentially a good uh, secondary player. Luke Clark, the kicker, stays at a 75. We've got the guard, Scott Freeman. He's a gem up to a 79, that 84 run blocking, the 90 strength, and the 90 acceleration. That would be a fantastic guard pickup. Pete Cowan, the corner, stays at a 74. Another kicker in Brandon Williams. Goes up to a 77, so we'll have a little bit of a battle and seeing which kicker we would pick up. He's got an 88. Luke Clark just has the 70. I prefer kick power over kick accuracy. Marcus Brown. Another athlete goes up to a 76. Eh, he seems like he'd be on defense or maybe as a wide receiver. Uh, probably not as a wide receiver, actually. He's, he's not good at catching the ball. Cornelius Thornburg. That's a name if I've ever seen one. 73 overall for the tackle. He goes up to a 75. Sean Mitchell, the wide receiver. Maybe the younger brother of our star wide receiver, Serge Mitchell. Goes up to a 73. Not the best acceleration, but a good top end speed. And he can catch decently well. But that 89 route running and the 94 carrying. Uh, he might, you know, play pretty well. Is not a wide receiver. Uh, 71 overall for the tackle. Drew Anderson goes up plus 9 to an 81. Heck of a gem there. 
Great blocking all around. Pretty strong and quick as well. Jay Smith, the linebacker, is a bust. Down to a 62. I'm not going to take him off the board right away. Uh, we just can't quite afford that. But good to know that he's a bust. We'll look at Ken Simmons, the tight end. He's also a bust down to a 62. Brian Valentine is also a bust down to 62. Can we have another Tony Wilson? Not a bust, but he does go down to 63. So... <laughs> That's a rough stretch of scouting. Ryan Jenkins, you want to break it? Staying at 67 is more than fine. 66 overall for Keith Robinson. And or Robertson, sorry. It doesn't matter if I pronounce his name right. He's probably not on the team. He goes down also to a 62 overall. Ricky Neal, a defensive end we got to look at. Thankfully, finally goes up. That's the first one we've seen in a while. Up to a 68 for the defensive end. Uh, pretty solid. He, uh, if he tackled a little bit better, he'd be really solid, but uh, I'm not necessarily upset with that. That could be a big pickup for us, and we have one more guy to scout. It'll be John Davis, another defensive end. He's going to go down to a 63. Uh, <laughs> saw a lot of players go down. A couple of players go up. Uh, the top of our board is probably unattainable, but it would be nice anyways. I'm just going to go ahead and remove Nick Winston because, let's be honest, we're not picking him up no matter what. Well, that is our scouting done. We've redshirted our players. We've set our depth chart and our custom schedules. So let's get this season underway. Our first year with Eastern Michigan, again, as the offensive coordinator, hopefully is the head coach next season. And it's probably not going to be easy as we get a little bit of XP there. But we do get a decent game starting on the road against SMU. Uh, <laughs> they just called us news. Paracellar dwellers. Uh, I don't know if I can blame them. Let's take a quick look at the preseason polls. See where we stand. Our old team, Coastal Carolina, actually went down four overall to a 91 overall team. Uh, they stay Ranked as that number one in the preseason poll. Oklahoma, Oregon, USC, Tennessee, Georgia, West Virginia, Ohio State, South Carolina, and Cal round out the top 10. Scrolling through the rest of the top 25 seems nothing too crazy. And the question is, how far down are we going to have to scroll to find ourselves? I'm going to guess in the 80s. Anything higher than that, I would certainly be fine with. Uh, anything lower is not great. Uh-oh, are we in the 100s? There's not a whole lot of teams down here. What the? We are one of the worst teams in the country, according to these rankings. 126 teams in the game, and they put us all the way down at 111. 77 overall, one-star prestige. Uh, C's with a D-minus special teams rating across the board. That is, well, that's pretty rough. You might say, though, that this team is three times better, right? Uh, Coastal's ranked number one. We have three ones in our rankings, so certainly that must be something good. SMU, the team that we're playing week one, it turns out they're ranked 108th. They are a higher overall than us, that 81, uh, but <laughs> this really is a, uh, a battle between a pair of cellar dwellers. Our preseason Heisman watch uh anything crazy tennessee running back clemson quarterback army running back coastal running back and penn state running back mike fontaine went up to an 84 overall so we went up plus six this season uh, the power back had a decent year last year finally got over a thousand yards it just took like 16 games uh but i'll expect pretty big things from him i'm curious to see what they do with the quarterback situation now that uh, Marquise and Radon have both left for the NFL on our preseason All-American list, uh, we're not going to have anybody. Will Coastal, though, you got to imagine, at least on defense, yeah, Will Phillips, Don Riley, Spencer Stanley, Aaron Jenkins, uh, all there for the first team All-NCAA, second team. Uh, do I see the name Coastal anywhere? Nobody on second team. Kind of interesting. Uh, all SEC, there's probably going to be a ton of them. And the Alt-Mac. Will we find our way onto this list at all? Serge Mitchell, maybe? Justin Dawson, the defensive tackle for us. And Wade Benjamin. So a couple of defensive players. That's not good for us as the offensive coordinator. And there's Serge Mitchell, second team All-Mac. Uh, not the best honor that you can receive as a player, but there is something. 
Also a right end and a defensive tackle and Obi Winston and Chris Banks. So, oh, okay, cool. Mike Briggs as well. So a few players getting some recognition from the conference. Again, the team uh, before we joined them last year went five and seven. Did we just get this one underway? We can maybe do the recruiting afterwards. So we are not favored to win this one. We know SMU is the higher overall team and they get a play at home. So, uh, do we, I mean, this is tough. Uh, again, not updated with our uniforms. Uh, we have some interesting ones, I guess I would say, but they're nothing too crazy. SMU has been updated. I really like SMU's uh, home uniforms. And we're just going to keep them with that standard one. The, we could go with the Dallas helmet. Yeah, we're going to go with the Dallas helmet. It's too cool not to use. 81 overall to our 77 with an 83 offense to our 79 and a 78 defense to our 76. This is not going to be easy. Hopefully our defensive coordinator and our head coach have some sort of answer for their offense. And we're just going to have to spend the game kind of learning what our offense is able to do. Uh, top player wise, we know Serge Mitchell is our highest. They've got an 88 and 86 and an 84 for their top three. We go 91, 86, 83. So our ceiling is a little bit higher with our top players, but that's about it. And we will just get this one underway. Uh, Gerald J. Ford Stadium here in Dallas, right? That sounds right. <laughs> As we will take on SMU. Not a whole lot of fans in attendance for this game. First game of the season. You would think they'd be a little bit more excited, but just not all that impressive of a game. Uh, the matchup going our way so far as we win the toss, and we will elect to kick this one off. And we won't be doing special teams or defense this season, so it's going to be a little bit weird. But, uh, I mean, just a lot of simming. And, well, defense got to stop, it seems. I got to get in the yeah, the right mindset for how to use the sim effectively because uh, that wasn't it. Uh, I do currently have us running the Coastal Carolina playbook. I think we'll change that up as this season goes on. But a good read option to Jesse Wagner goes for eight yards on first down. I think it would be absolutely fantastic if we could get on the board first here. Fans starting to cheer for the... Mustangs here in Dallas as we hand it off to Wagner again. And he just gets back to the line of scrimmage. And we're going to elect to go to the air here on third down. See what Bird can do through the air. And we got a guy open. We're going to find it. Ferguson, the tight end, brings it down. Gets a little bit of a stiff arm. And Kent gets us 14 yards. So Ed Bird, his first pass uh, with us at the helm is completed. We'll go back to running the football as... Another one up the middle. Wagner's having a decent start to the game. Jesse picks up seven there. Now, you guys will have to bear with me as uh, I, I start to learn all of our players' names. Uh, certainly not going to be easy as we will go to Simmons. And then I think maybe we'll try to target Serge Mitchell through the air as we do pick up that first down. We have the best player in this game on the field. It would be foolish of us not to go for him. So Serge Mitchell in the route, goes up high points it. What the heck? He, that was a massive vertical. <laughs> Serge Mitchell gets the catch 20 yards downfield, but he skied for that one. Try to go to the air again. I will be looking for Wagner on this one and the running back is open enough. Nice catch. He's got a little bit of speed and he gets 17 yards. This offense has a couple more weapons than I expected it to show. I mean, we are playing one of the worst teams in the country, but as one of the worst teams in the country ourselves, I'm impressed. Let's go with another handoff. Simons is in. I don't know if I'm going to call him Simons or Simmons. It's one of the two. <laughs> it's Simmons, right? Simons? I'm losing my mind. It's Simmons, right? Like Ben Simmons? Yeah, it's Simmons. Simons would be 1M. We give it to Wagner again, and he gets two yards. It's third and six, and this is a... Uh, a crucial time. I don't want to settle for a field goal. So to avoid the field goal, well, we're going to step back to pass in the shotgun. Five wide on third and six. Just a three-man rush. There's Serge Mitchell open with the catch. Three SMU players in the area, but he holds on, and it's a first and goal. Can we get our first Eagles touchdown? As Ed Bird is four of four on this drive, and we're going to hand it off to Wagner again. And up the middle he goes into the end zone. 
And it's our first touchdown with Eastern Michigan. And the factory has reopened. So on the board, now we get to start simming, which just feels so foreign to me. We get the extra point. Kickoff is good coverage there. Uh, 10 yard penalty. They move forward. Third and nine. Do we get the stop? It's fourth and nine, which means we get the ball back just like that. Near the end of the third quarter, decent starting field position on the drive. We're going to step back, looking to throw the ball. Y is up and give it to Wilson. He picks up a block and man, this team is executing right now. I didn't come in expecting Ed Bird to be a great quarterback, but he has just been throwing dimes all day long. Handing it off again to Wagner. We'll bounce it back inside, and Jesse gets four yards on that first down. I've got to keep reminding myself that SMU is not really one of the best teams as our first quarter will come to a close, but, I mean, if this is how we're playing right now, we stand to look really good in the next couple of years. So to start the second quarter, we will be across midfield again, handing it off to Jesse Wagner and letting him go to work. He's been picking up the yards pretty consistently, so we'll keep using those legs. Third and two, our third, third down of the game for the offense. Looks like they want to bring pressure, which can only mean good things for us. If Mitchell has time to get free, it's a touchdown. Otherwise, we should be able to find Wagner. I'm waiting for it. I'm throwing it up. Serge Mitchell, the 50-50 ball. He can't hold on to it. That was great defense to break that one up. It's our first incompletion of the day, and it's fourth down. So coach does not want to go for it. Fourth and two good field position, which means... Uh, wait, we did go for it. Was that a fake? Courtney Smith, the person who picked up the yards, is our fullback. So I imagine it was a fake punt run. Direct snapped to said fullback. So, uh, okay, coach showing a little bit of balls there. Drive stays alive. We get the second and five. And again, we're going to step back, look into pass, seeing if we can find somebody open. And there it is again, Wilson able to get that catch on the short little out route. Well, I'm curious to see how good Ed Bird can move, so we're going to go with the read option and see what he can do with his legs. He's not very quick. That was, uh, that was a tough four yards to pick up as we slide down. We don't want him getting hurt. It's going to be important for me to remember that our backup quarterbacks this year are straight dookie. So we got to keep Ed healthy as long as we can as we'll step back. That was an incredibly late throw. And we're lucky that one wasn't intercepted. Second incompletion of the day for Ed. And it's another third down for us as we'll look to the air trying to complete this one. Running back open. Wagner holds on to it. And we just continue to come up in these big moments. Jesse Wagner's second catch of the game. That gives us a first and goal, and well, we're just going to keep feeding him the rock, giving the ball. He's got a blocker in front of him, and he's got the momentum headed downfield. He's got seven yards. We're inside the five, looking to score again. How great is it that our offense is doing well, and our defense has gotten the stop so far. Simmons is in second and goal up the middle, charging forward. Jerome finds his way in for six, and we extend the lead once again. Great start for the team. As the extra point is good. Decent return. SMU trying to move the ball. This is their longest drive yet. But that's going to be it. They still have the ball apparently. And was it an interception for us? I, I got to be honest. I rarely have ever simmed in this game. So I'm not great with it yet. It's, it's a learning curve for me there. We have the ball though. So I imagine it was a turnover. Because it didn't look like there was a fourth down. But... 220 left in the uh, quarter. We pinpoint Serge Mitchell. He breaks free. Ooh, off to the races. 30 yards downfield. There's no way that this one works, right? The flea flicker. It's two minutes left in the half. They're not bringing a crazy amount of pressure. Time to set and throw. And there was just way too much coverage. Really an awful decision, but I had to go for it. Coming in as a new coordinator. I got to see what my team is made of. They're unable to get it done that time. And on this second and 10, I could see this being a touchdown. Coverage seems a little bit soft now. We're just going to go with the safer throw over the middle to Jonathan Nixon and pick up the 12 yards. Clock is moving as we are at the 40-yard line now. We'll look deep. Serge Mitchell potentially. 
Or if I can wait for it over the middle, Broussard comes down with that. That was a tough throw for Ed Burr to make, but he just slotted it in there. Uh, DB, your linebacker, was right there, but couldn't get his hands in, just quite in front of it. Minute and a half now as we're almost inside the red zone, continuing to move. Tough throw, maybe a bit of a mistake. We get two yards and Wagner gets out of bounds, so that'll stop the clock immediately for us. Kind of gives us a little bit of a breather and a chance to sub some guys out. We have all our timeouts, so we're going to go with the halfback draw. And the blocking was incredible, but my running wasn't, so it only turned into two yards. I feel like we could have got a lot more there. What can we do here? Another third and six this time from the 21-yard line. I like Mitchell on the post route. Is anything going to be open? Are they going to make Wagner just the easiest target of all time? They can't be doing that. Now inside the red zone with another first down. And we don't want to give them too much time, so... Well, I don't mind running the clock a little bit. Under a minute now on the half as we will go up the middle and Simons or Simmons. I'm having a really hard time with that. Simmons <laughs> losing a couple of yards. Uh, if they're going to back us up, I guess we're just going to throw the ball. Again, looking for Wagner. Maybe Mitchell on this one is actually it's hot route. Mitchell and set back looking to throw pressure coming. Tough throw. And Wagner kind of got hit there, but uh, just went over everybody's head. So I guess we're still in a position to pick up a first down, but it's likely touchdown or bust at this point. So we'll see who it is that's going to be open. A tough throw coming. Going to put it up for... Well, it's going to go for Serge Mitchell. He might have been wide open in the corner, but hit as we're throwing. It's incomplete. Fourth and 12. And let's watch the field goal just to see how our kicker does in this situation. Can we make it a 17-0 game? With about 20 seconds before the half, the kick is up, and that looks pretty good to me. So we end up getting the points on the drive. We can't be too upset about that. All right. What can our defense do to hold them? Kickoff is a touchback. First down pretty much goes nowhere, and that's going to be the end of the half as they just kind of let that one go into the locker room. So no halftime show for us, which means, I don't know. Uh, we get to be pretty excited about the way that one went. 17-0. Defense has played phenomenally. Offense could do a little bit better. Uh, but at the end of the day, we're scoring points. And we've only had to settle for a field goal once. So not upset with that. Uh, and that means that we get the ball to start this third quarter. So we took the touchback, which means... Let's just go back and throw. See what we can find through the air over the middle. Waiting for it. Patiently, we find Wilson. Again, a pretty tough throw as that one could have been picked off, but we find the man. Ed Burge is sitting in the pocket, making the absolute fantastic reads today. Try to make another good read on this read option. And uh, if he was a little bit quicker, that would have been a big gain. Instead, he loses a yard. Our running game worked pretty well in that first quarter. Let's try to go back to that. Give it to Wagner on second 11. Up the middle. They were bringing pressure. And even still, he's getting bounced around. But he found five yards. And this kind of feels like it's becoming a trend. But it's third and six once again. So once again, we will step back. Looking to throw. They're not bringing a whole lot of pressure. Y is still open. I was going to say was open. But they just refused to cover him. So we'll take that. We'll move across midfield. And... Look to really put this game out of reach. How about a deep bomb on the play action? Safety's moving out of the way. Pressure there over the middle. Bennett wide open. Gets the catch. Not a whole lot of room after, but that's 30 yards downfield. Play action worked to perfection there. Well, if the stands were empty at the start of this game, I imagine at the end of them, they're going to be much more empty. SMU fans... Not really getting a whole lot to see uh, in this home game of theirs, so wouldn't be surprised if they're leaving the stadium early. Wagner picked up another eight on that first down, gets us inside the 10, and now Simmons comes in. Second and two, try to keep it up the middle, and Jerome just got leveled. Thankfully, he was at the line of scrimmage, but that was a hard hit. All right, what can we do on third down? Looking towards the air. They're not bringing as much pressure as I thought. Trying to run, thinking better of it, and throwing late. That was a bad decision all around. It's fourth and three, and I think we're going to have to settle for the field goal again. And I guess we'll just watch these, see if our kicker really has what it takes to make these field goals. 337 left in the third quarter. Kick is up. It looked maybe a little bit wide. No, it's through the uprights. 20 to nothing. Feeling pretty confident now. 
So what can the defense do this time? Kick is taken for a touchback. A decent two-yard pass, three-yard rush. Looks like a first down for SMU. Still moving, still moving. Could they score? Stopped at the line of scrimmage, and no, that was a punt. So, well, it's our ball now. I promise you I am going to get better at commentating the sim. <laughs> it's just going to take a little bit. How about another read option? These are probably foolish, but when they do this and they don't go for uh, Jesse there, it's working pretty well for us. 2-11 left in the third quarter. You better believe it's just time to start running the ball. We don't need to give them any more time uh, than we than necessary. We just got to get out of here with the win. We're a team that won five last year. We're expected to win five this year. If we can get a win in week one, that is so fantastic. Simmons comes in. Good five-yard pickup after a pretty strong cut. Another third down to work with. And this could be a controversial decision, but we're going to keep it on the ground. Simmons still in on the play. Can he get the blocking? No, not even close. He's met in the backfield. It's a loss of a yard, and we're going to have to punt the ball away now. So punt is returned to about the 25. First down, they go for two yards on second and eight. It's a seven-yard pickup, third and one. Uh, they're not able to do it. Pass thrown away, so I imagine they punt the ball to us, and that is the case. Uh, no touchback. We get it here at the 26-yard line. Uh, 27. I can do math. Running it on first down. And Wagner, space out towards the edge. Jesse, can he get the corner? He's got some wheels on him. He's almost to midfield on the 22-yard pickup. We're over 100 yards as a team, and he's up to 90 on just 15 carries. Our defense, though, how about them? They are suffocating SMU at this point. Uh, just Eagles picking them up, dropping uh, these Mustangs off the side of the mountain, I guess. Because there's nothing that they can do. See if we can get this final play of the third quarter off. No. Into the fourth quarter, we will go then up 20 to nothing. Uh, if we could get this started off with a shutout win on the road. First game is offensive coordinator. That would be... Absolutely fantastic news. Got to make it through the final six minutes of play, though. So we're going to step back, looking to throw on first down. Hopefully we avoid any sort of interceptions outside the pocket. Again, a mistake. We're going to throw it. <laughs> okay. Uh, why, uh, <laughs> why not just run the ball there? What am I... What am I doing? Why am I trying to take Ed Bird outside the pocket? Not only do I throw a pick, but he takes a big shot there as well. All right, well, let's see if the defense is going to be pretty solid. Pass thrown away on first down. Pass thrown away on second down. Uh, and pass dropped on third down. So I guess we're going to survive. No, they went for it on fourth down, but they were stopped a yard shy of the line of scrimmage. So we get the ball back here. And we can just run it right up the middle. Uh, I think I got to just run. Foolish to do anything else. First and 10. Wagner loses a yard, but... Uh, it makes the clock start to tick away. All right. Well, let's go with the counter. Got to keep running it in clock burn mode. Wagner cutting it upfield. Got to get those positive yards, and we get it back to, once again, another third and six. Don't know if I learned my lesson from the first time. Don't know if there was even a lesson to learn, but we're going to run the ball once again uh, on third down. Don't want to risk passing it. Mo, or sorry, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> Stay patient, follow the block as we get the first down. The name Wa Wagner or Wagner makes me think of Mo, the basketball player in the NBA, but it's Jesse Goon. We'll figure it out. Passing on first down. This could be a big mistake or it could be a big catch for Serge Mitchell. And we've passed for 225 in this game already. Four catches for a nice 69 yards for Serge in his first game of the season. Uh, but we're going to Simmons as we run this one up the middle. And that was a good run by Jerome. So the running game has been pretty phenomenal so far. As we will go back to Jerome on the direct snap. And the running back has the space to get the first down. Just a little bit of trickeration. We keep the drive alive and the clock moving again. I'm very much enjoying this offense. Obviously, the next couple of weeks when we play much more difficult opponents, it could be a big struggle. But this is a great way to open up our season. Second and five. Just above a minute and a half left in the game. 
Again, handing it off this time to Robinson, the third string back, and Pat gets us four yards. We're seeing third down a lot more often than I would like to this game. This is our 11th third down of the game, but uh, we're getting it done for the most part. Jerome Simmons can't do it that time. I'm going to call the hurry up. See if coach will let us. Uh, we're just going to try to pick this one up and keep the offense on the field. No chance of SMU scoring in that case. We'll let the clock burn down a bit here and we'll see. Can Jerome do it? 15 seconds to go. Just needs to get a yard and he does so. So there's our first and goal. And we could have come out in the clock management formation. Victory formation, taking a knee, but we burned the clock off before I could do that. It's a win nonetheless, and it's a shutout win on our first game with the new program. One of the most interesting career moves you will ever see, leaving uh, the head coaching gig at a back-to-back -back national championship school where you've got everything going for you to go be an offensive coordinator at a very middle of the road. Uh, one of the worst teams in the country, but... If it pays off, it pays off. We could look like geniuses in a couple of years' time. Jesse Wagner, player of the game, is uh, offensively, we did a very good job to win the shutout 20 to nothing. Well, that was absolutely fantastic. Coastal, look at that, starting pretty strong to their season wins against Mississippi State 55 to 24. Uh, held the Bulldogs scoreless through the second half, so that's pretty big news for them. Always got to be important to watch our former team. Uh, us, 22 first downs, 146 on the ground, 225 through the air. We had the turnover, but that's fine. Killed on time of possession, 19 minutes to five. And look at SMU, two first downs, 50 rushing yards, 35 passing yards. Our defense just strangled them there. Absolutely fantastic. Jesse Wagner, again, our offensive player of the game, 103 yards rushing with a touchdown. Some receiving yards on top of that. And Andrew Breed loved the left end. Four tackles and a tackle for loss as our defensive player of the game. So we have the win. Uh, and I've decided we're going to wait for recruiting for uh, the start of the next video. Unfortunately for you guys, that means that this is the end of this episode. So of course, that means it's time for me to ask you guys. If you enjoyed this one, please feel free to hit the like button. I want to know in the comments what you guys think. Uh, uh, this game, I thought it was a lot of fun. It's a little bit interesting. I will get better at commentating on the sim portions, but uh, I think that we are in a good spot. 1-0 to start the season. Uh, we just got to get to a bowl game, and I think that would be considered a successful season. And then hopefully next year we can take over as head coach. While you're down there hitting like and leaving your comment, please feel free to subscribe if you want to be updated when new episodes come out. And then you can head to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter, our community Discord, and as always, the college football revamp mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. Excited to uh, start on this new career path with you guys. And again, my name is Goonmaster. You guys are the gray boys. Wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios.